end of the car at Newland in Worcestershire. The race was stopped and the decision was taken to cancel the stage. The accident, which is unprecedented on British roads, has stunned the organisation. Everyone, including the athletes, want their sympathies known and have donated the day's prize list to the officer's family. On behalf of everyone, we also express our deepest sorrow. Well, I've been associated with cycle racing on British roads now for more than 30 years, and this is without doubt one of the saddest days I can recall. But while we await a statement from the British cyclist Chris Borman on behalf of all of the riders, we offer you now this report of the race so far, a race which has been temporarily suspended because of great tragedy. Sterling Castle was the finish line for the opening prologue time trial. An hors d'oeuvre as they raced a distance of 4.2 kilometres. The fastest time would win the leader's red jersey. And George Hincapie, an American, had set the time to beat at 6 minutes 10 seconds. As last man to start, Chris Boardman knew what he had to do. It was a nervous moment for the UK's number one. By halfway, though, he was a second faster. But at the moment, looking at the pictures here, and obviously we can't feel out there what's going on, but he looks to have the rhythm. Now he's onto the cobblestones, and he is certainly holding his speed at the moment. Chris Bourbon is looking very, very good to hold this race at the minute. One second up at the halfway point on George Hincapie, and Bourbon, remember, is the last man on the course. He's the last man to have a crack at taking the first leader's jersey in this year's Pro Tour, and Bourbon looks very good, Phil. He doesn't look like he's weakening. He's picking his way right across the apex of these corners, going at the straightest line possible. Still got the agility to pick up the smooth pavement at the side, and he may well just have done it, because the time now is round about 5 minutes and 40 seconds, so it's going to go very close. He has literally flown up this hill. He's starting to hurt a little bit now for Chris Bourbon, but he has climbed it so well. There's the finishing line now. He can see Paul Manning just ahead of him finishing. Chris Borman is going to win this race. I feel certain of that as he's aiming for the time of 6.10.38 for George Hincapie. Chris Borman comes to the line. Ignore the clock. There it is now. And he hits the line. 6.08.68. The last is kept for the best. Chris Borman has won the Blue Tour opening prologue. Indeed he had, he'd beaten George Hincapie by two seconds, Baranowski, the Polish time trial champion, by five, and his teammate Stu O'Grady, who was fifth, by 11. It had been Bourbon's first win for 10 months. Well, it's, it's fairly apt, really, that, that my first win of the year has come, uh, come back in, in Great Britain and Scotland, so uh, I'm absolutely delighted. Hopefully it's a turning point for me. We've got great weather, um, and it's a place that I love. It's, in fact, this is where I take my holidays at the end of the year, so, uh, no, it's all been just right today. That night, Borman spent time being revitalised for the long road race stages ahead. The win had been satisfying, but it could not have been decisive. The first full day started from Edinburgh and its famous castle yards. Borman was in top spirits, and the fans were on hand to boost the morale. The first stage left Edinburgh, crossing into England over Carter Bar, racing into Newcastle upon Tyne to complete 207 kilometres. The time bonus sprint at Pontyland proved significant as George Hincapie raced for the leader's red jersey. Stuart O'Grady won, but a two-second bonus for the American in second place was enough to give him the lead in this race on the road. The front group of 19 contained all of the top names. They raced now towards the Tyne and the home of the Magpies. The winner was to get a 10-second time bonus, and both Hincapie and Chris Borman wanted it as they raced now towards the finish. Now, Laurent Lefebvre, a man who only turned professional last year, looks as though he's going to try and solo to the finish. He certainly does. He won the stage of the Tour of Chile last year and held the yellow jersey in that event for three days. Now he may well have caught them just at the right time because we've had attack after attack and it looks as if the impetus has gone out of that group and everybody is sitting on the wheel of Chris Boardman waiting for Gann to chase it down. So Borman is watching everybody and the attacks are coming from deep down in the breakaway and now that's liven things up again and once more the red jersey of Borman is beginning to look round now for some help. It certainly is. You can see now the young rider from France here, second year in the professional ranks. He's opened up a very good gap indeed, Phil. There's no organised chase behind him. Certainly it should come from the US Postal Service and the GAN team because they are the two big professional teams, the two big rivals. And of course, let's not forget, the man in the US Postal Service, George Kim Caffey, is the current leader at the moment, so they should try and nail it down. 
Hinkapi, Hinkapi Paul is de desperately trying here to get an easy ride to the finish because he knows he's got the sprint, although he might be a little worried about the fact that he's quite uphill in Grey Street and he's going to have to time his sprint to perfection. And first of all, they're going to have to bring back this breakaway because he's giving it just about everything now, young Lefebvre. In fact, one man going clear now. Chris Boardman has been doing so much work at the front and it appears that he's just ridden off the front of this group and you can see there Hinkap in the green jersey just following Stuart O'Grady. Well, this would be a great ride by Lefebvre if he can pull this one off because when a young professional gets a win in a big international stage race, all the big teams start to sit up and take notice. He hit him right with terrific teamwork, which Neil Stevens started, and Lefebvre is now set to finish here. This is the nice, very fast descent down to the quayside in newcastle upon Tyne. Then we will go along the quays, turn left up Grey Street. It is a hard climb at the end of more than 200 kilometres, even to these guys but he's almost home and safe here, and Chris Borman is desperate behind him. He certainly is. There was the flag, one kilometre remaining for Laurent Lefebvre at the front here. Now he's got a chance just to recover a little bit before he turns left up into Grey Street, and Borman still at around about 50 metres off his back wheel, struggling with all of his might to catch the Frenchman before they start the duo climb up to the finish line. But Borman, I don't think he can believe this. He's just looked round to see where everybody is, and they are not, to my knowledge, chasing him right. They're chasing him down now. Can he get up? Now, let's get back to the group. Here, US Postal have got the orders now. They've got to bring the green jersey to Borman and try and get Hinkapi to beat him in the sprint. And, you know, the uphill finish is going to be crucial now because once they hit it, it's a long way to the line. It certainly is. There's a big fight at the front here. These two men trying to get back into contention. Borman hasn't quite made it, you know, as they come into the left-hand turn. Now it's going to tilt upwards all the way to the finish line. Boardman seems to be slowing down just a little bit. And now, Phil, there's not very much more than 500 metres to go. U.S. Postal Service, well, I think they've missed out. Well, Lefebvre has made the move of this race, and I don't know if you can hear the crowd here, but they are yelling Boardman's name. They are lifting him as well, because Boardman is shutting him down inside of the line. Chris Boardman is going to convert this day and complete the impossible. He is catching Lefebvre, who is slowing dramatically. Listen to the crowd. Chris Borman is going to get his first road race victory for four years, Paul, since 1994, when he won a stage of the Dauphiné Libre in France, his only other professional road race win. And look at them coming up too. Lefebvre's not going to even be second now. That's Andre Korf is going to get second. Borman gets the win. Absolutely brilliantly judged. And I bet you Chris Borman cannot believe that. And neither will George Hincapi, because he watched the wrong man. He watched Stuart O'Grady and that is O'Grady now saying to Chris Borman well done mate, that was superb he has increased his overall lead in the Prue Tour with that great, great ride the second stage from Gateshead to York began with many hoping for inspiration from the Angel of the North as the North Yorkshire Moors approached the biggest challenge on the 170 kilometres route was Rosedale Chimney lined with people expecting to see a decisive move by the few who could climb the cruel ascent Ahead on its slopes were four riders, Chris Walker, Jonathan Waters, Jens Voigt and Ludovic Auger, with a lead of over five minutes, which put Walker in the overall lead. Behind, alarm bells were sounding and Stuart O'Grady was in pursuit, while further in the distance, Chris Borman was in red and he wasn't far behind either. Four leaders then are well over the top now of Rosedale Chimney. We're on the way off the moors at 66 kilometres an hour. That's about 43 miles an hour. But here we have a great chase by the man in red. And O'Grady has looked over and seen the captain coming. He'll be pretty pleased about that, I think, because once they get to the top of this hill, there's a small climb left and it's all onto the flat for the finish in York. This could be working out very well indeed for Chris Borman. O'Grady looks over his shoulder, visibly slows when he sees it's the red jersey of his team leader coming up. Well, that's a sign of a great tactician. He knows he's done enough now to get over the top of the Rosedale chimney. But further down, a lot of problems for Eric Boswinkle. Well, they say Holland is flat, and certainly there's no hills like this, even in the Valkenberg region of Holland. But Boswinkle is off and gratefully receiving the pushes of the crowd. Now, back to O'Grady at the front. He knows now that Chris is coming, and these boys are strong today at the right time. They certainly are. In fact, a serious group starting to form here. This is going to be a counter-attack. Stuart O'Grady looking over his shoulder, now waiting for Borman with Baranowski and Neil Stevenson. This is Rob Hales for the Bright Boys team, and it gives you a chance to see just how difficult it is to get over these climbs here in the Yorkshire Dales. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Go on. Go on. 
Well, everybody's legs are aching just watching Rob Hales there, but these boys are sprinting to the top now. They are still some distance behind the leaders, but it's O'Grady who goes over the top, followed by Chris Borman, and being joined by US Postal Rider. That's the gap, Paul. Five minutes, ten, and Chris Walker is still the leader of this race. But the gap was coming down, and with 20 kilometers to go, Borman's group had caught the leaders. Now there were eight men in front. While behind, George Hincapie was in a group, also trying to fight back into the picture. Borman was back in charge, and he spoke with O'Grady to plan the best way to play their final cards on a day which had swung around in their favor. Chris Borman had told Stuart O'Grady he should try to win the stage. Borman himself seemed prepared now to sacrifice his red jersey. Well, this should have been a decisive stage. It should have been the stage when everybody said Chris Borman wouldn't make it. Well, just look at this now. Borman has springboarded his teammate towards the line now. As Borman drops away, O'Grady's going forward. Well, there's an attack came in. This time it was Darius Baranowski going across the front there, marked by the man in the purple jersey. That is O'Grady, another rider coming across. This is the best placed rider in the US Postal Service team. He was fifth this morning, trying to outbox everybody. Look how comfortable O'Grady is on his wheel, though. O'Grady has been simply superb today, and he's now, I think he's been told by Chris Borman, you've got to try and win this, mate, and he's gone forward with the break, and they are going. This is the chase group, you can see the others in the front. This race is going to be ever so close when we get to the line. Well, this is Borman now leading him round the corner on his wheel, one of the other US Postal Service riders. It must be Bortus because he's been caught out in the split. Looking up the long straightaway, the leading group now of five riders coming together with just one kilometre left to go. On the back there, number 11, is the Festina rider, Neil Stevens. Well, we saw Neil Stevens yesterday as we came into Newcastle make an attack for the line, and he's done it again! It is a perfect move, and this is, again is how he won a stage of the Tour de France. Certainly as he looks over his shoulder, there's no reaction come from the other four. It could be the one for Steve-O this afternoon. Everybody loved this rider. The, the crowd at the finish line would like to see him win. He's such a popular rider. Looking over his shoulders now, Baranowski trying to see just what the reaction is from behind. This could be what Steve-O needs. He's got around about 10 seconds over the, two, the three riders chasing. So Stevens, in fact, we can see it, has been brought back, so he's been caught, and he must be able to see the line here. Stevens, if you look at the pictures on the left now, and he has been caught by the chase group. Baranowski is in there as well. Jonathan Clay, who rode so well, is on the wheel now. And right at the back of the group is Stuart O'Grady with the rest of the race chasing them down. This is going to be a tremendous sprint finish, and it looks as though Johnny Clay is going to have a go on the left. He's had a wonderful day. O'Grady's on his wheel, trying to come to the middle, and he's been hooked. Clay has pushed him out to one side, but O'Grady gets through. He gets the bonus of 10 seconds. He is going to be the new leader of the tour because clearly there is a time gap back to the rest of the race. Here comes Chris Borman now. The clock is counting down the gap. 13 seconds it is, and that will be his deficit now behind Stuart O'Grady tonight. And look at George Hincapie's group. They were right on the back wheel there of Chris Borman. This race is still a battle of seconds. These guys, well, are they friends or what? Well, it was the third stage win to Gann, and O'Grady now had the leader's jersey holding a 13 seconds advantage over Borman. Baranowski was third, and Hincapie was down to fourth. It was a great feeling for the likeable Aussie. Well, racing on the fifth stage of the Prue Tour was suspended after 56 kilometres because of the death of one of the police escort. Under these tragic circumstances, the race has been temporarily suspended. And while we await a statement from Chris Boardman on behalf of the cyclists, we are continuing our look back at the race so far. We now pick up the story on the road from Manchester to Blackpool. Three kilometres into the race, so five riders go out on the attack. Jens Voigt is there as the guard dog again for the French GAN team. At 10 kilometres, a puncture to one of those riders, Max Nielsen of Denmark, would never see them again. On to 30 kilometres, the climb of Home Moss and the weather was getting worse. It certainly was. The clouds were coming down, making it very difficult, but still, the man at the front in the polka dot jersey as king of the mountains would lead them over the top. Jonathan Vortus taking maximum points over the summit. So 12 points for him, Jens Voigt was second, Mark Walsham third, and Guillaume Auger was fourth. The main field were tracking them, one minute, ten seconds behind. 
and they were taking it very carefully indeed. After 42 kilometers and a daredevil descent, number 173, Andrea Palawan joined the leaders, making five men once again at the head of affairs. At 46 kilometers, the riders are in Huddersfield and the special sprint for the small time bonuses. Jens Voigt, the leader in this competition, was leaving nothing to chance. He was clear, he got the small bonuses and the points. Mark Walsham was second, Andrea Polwan was third. At 92 kilometers, when the race seemed settled, the leaders went the right way, but the main field made a wrong turn. Somebody had taken an arrow away, and the main field did not know which way to go. They chose the wrong one. Riders now were asking the question, which way was it back to the road? Well, one man who knew what happened was the commissar, Chris Naylor. He was on the motorbike, he'd seen it all. It appears that somebody has removed the direction arrows prior to our arrival. And then, of course, with the speed, people come in, they didn't know which way to go. So it's a general mistake with spectators currently removing the arrows so between the leaders and the peloton. So it wasn't long before the race was back on course, while further ahead on the open highway, the police have put up a roadblock. The leaders now had been stopped officially. They would now have to wait until they could reorganize the race start on the road. Jens Voigt didn't look too worried and neither did the rest of the men. Back in the main field, Neil Stevens on the far right was having a chat. Chris Borm was explaining to his teammates that the leaders had stopped up front. Now onto the top of Boland, the race was about to resume. The leaders now were still climbing steadily on what was the final climb of the day. The main field now stopped to re-establish the situation and they were going to be released with an estimated time gap of six minutes for. Exactly, that was the time gap when the confusion started, five minutes and 45 seconds to be exact. And now what they had to do was get themselves organized, but it was going to be a lot harder for the five men in the front because they had been stopped for 30 minutes at the side of the road. And it proved more difficult for those five leaders. They were swallowed up on the run into Blackpool as we approached the Pleasure Beach. The field was in full flight, heading for the line. And it looks as though we are going to see, for the first time in the Prue Tour now, a big sprint finish. Certainly a lot of good sprinters in there. The Festina riders riding very close to the front for Andrea Korf. Chris Walker not far away either. But also the Gan men starting to organize themselves because Stuart O'Grady, the leader, has proved to be one of the fastest sprinters in the event so far. Festina man on the right-hand side, he's done his job. He'll sit up and swing to the back, but it looks as if they've lost a few places there because they're back in ninth and 10th place. Well, still the Bright Boys, and that's a good name for them, isn't it? From Great Britain, sitting on the front. They've now got a little bit of crack down in the centre of the big peloton. This is the left turn. We're now on to the Golden Mile and heading up towards the Big Dipper. And I know all about that as the race comes up now towards the line. Now, this will be a terrific sprint here. Uh, John Clay and Matt Illingworth are leading out. They hope Chris Walker, there he is, in fourth place. And also, not too far away, is the mauve jersey of Jens Voigt. He's looking to pick up now the red jersey of Stuart O'Grady, who's also there. Well, there's the red jersey of O'Grady in about eighth place there. There's the one-kilometre banner. Now Johnny Clay really has to bury himself. This is an ideal finish for the sprinters. It's a straight road. You can't make any mistakes, and you've got room to manoeuvre and get into the ideal position to unleash that sprint. Well, this is a fine piece of pace making here by Matt Illingworth. He's going to hold them as long as he can, but it takes a bit of holding now as the rush is coming on the left. The big map boys are making a run. Now, they also have a top sprinter on this event, Jay Sweet from Australia. Neil Stevens on the right of our picture is trying to lead out his big teammate, Andre Korf of Germany on the Festina squad. Over on the left of our picture now, the Gan team are making a run as well. They are thinking of the red jersey now of Stuart O'Grady because if he snatches a time bonus here, he will increase his overall lead. So it's the Aussie from Festina now. Stephen has got the lead here. He's making the run for line very, very early. Look at Stuart O'Grady in that red on the right and that is Magnus Backstead in the white jersey on the left again now we're opening for the line and Jay Sweet has appeared Jay Sweet for Big Matt has appeared just on the back wheel there of Backstead Backstead is coming up again now Sweet is kicking hard Jay Sweet is coming up to the line Sweet will take it Backstead second and I think I think Stuart O'Grady got third place right on the line that was a tremendous result if he did and the photo finish shows he did O'Grady getting a four-second time bonus to increase his overall lead. 
There were no other changes overall, but O'Grady was now 17 seconds ahead of Boardman and 29 ahead of Darius Baranowski of the US Postal Team. Before the race had arrived, the Army's top parachute team, the Red Devils, were delivering the leaders' jerseys in style. Swinging out of the cloudy skies, they were searching for the landing spot, and of course, they found it spot on. And so to the podium with all the leaders' jerseys in the Prue Tour. Stage four of the event moved away from Chester via the Cat and Fiddle to Nottingham. The Cat and Fiddle, the high spot of the day in the Peak District. And by the time they got there, two British riders were on the attack. They've broken clear at 24 kilometres. Kevin Dawson of Great Britain and Julian Wynne of Wales in second place here. But the main attack of the day was coming from Darius Baranowski further down the climb. Starting the day 29 seconds behind, he was gaining enough time to become leader on the road. He joined his teammate Tyler Hamilton and together they tried to leave the race behind. He was now the leader on the road, albeit by a single second. However, his luck was not in and further on he had a flat tyre. All he could do was watch the race go by. So all that remained was to reach the city of Nottingham and sprint out between two British riders. Who would get the victory, we'd soon know. Now this is the turn into the home straight, a massive crowd again in Nottingham by the University here. And look at this now because Kevin Dawson is going to come from behind and go for the line. But Julian Wynne isn't done for yet because Julian Wynne of Wales is digging very deep into his reserves here. This is going to be a big victory for this young man and he takes it on the line and Kevin Dawson right with him in second place. A well-taken win for Julian Wynne of Wales. Kevin Dawson was second. The luckless Baranowski finished in 24th place. But the day belonged to Julian Wynne. Pretty tough to get a win like that. Absolutely brilliant. Made that, mate. And so that night in the hotel, it was, at, well, not quite champagne, but wine all round for the Welsh team. Overall, Borden was now in second place, 21 seconds behind. Baranowski was third. Well, today the fifth stage of the Prue Tour has been cancelled because of the death of an escorting police officer who is travelling five minutes ahead of the race. We can now go directly to Chris Boardman, who will speak on behalf of the riders. What happened today was a tragic accident. Um, the race has been fantastic. The police, police support has been great. Everybody is happy. The riders were, were as devastated as everybody else. We're quite happy to go along with whatever the organisation wanted to do. This seemed like the right thing to do. We're sorry to have disappointed people who came in to watch the finish, but obviously there was nothing else that we could do. We're involved in a sport that has, uh, that involves speed, and with that, with any sport that involves speed, there is a certain element of risk, and tragically accidents happen, and that's what happened today. Somebody died doing what they wanted to do. We're all here because we want to be here, and it's just a tragic accident. Um, our condolences to the family. I've been asked to pass that on as the riders' representative, and there's nothing more than we can say. Thank you very much. Well, the race will resume tomorrow from Bristol bound for Reading, but for the moment, everybody's thoughts on this race is for the police officer's family. Goodbye. <laughs>